Hello, and welcome to my attempt to make a flannel jumper dress. In order to do this, I started with the Daisy Pinafore dress from Rosary Apparel, and then did the following alterations. First, I did my standard broad back adjustment, and then I lowered the armhole slightly because from the test dress I made, it was riding a bit high for comfort for layering over shirts. And then I also dropped the waistband, since the daisy dress has a bit of a halfway between empire and natural waist fit. And accordingly, I lowered the length of the skirt by the same amount that I lowered the length of the top. One mistake that I made here is that I lowered the length of the skirt from the top, thereby making it wider along that top hemline, whereas the bodice was made narrower. If I had planned this out better, I probably would have tried to figure out a good ratio for how much narrower the bodice was and adjust the skirt width accordingly, but I didn't think of it at the time. The next step was cutting out the fabric. I didn't have a lot of fabric to work with, so I didn't pay too much mind to pattern matching, but I did try and look at it a little bit to see if a little bit of shifting around would do a little bit of a better job. But again, it wasn't something I was willing to potentially run out of fabric for. And then of course I cut out my interfacing. And then we move on to the final stage of prep work, which is making our darts ironing them down, and ironing on the interfacing. And this pattern has a lot of darts. And then I moved on to assembling the bodice. For the sleeveless version of the dress, there is a outer and inner layer of bodice so that all of the pieces are duplicated. So the inner lining back is sewn to the inner lining front at the shoulder seam, and the same is done for the outer layer. And then the two layers are sewn together along the armhole and along the front opening. And then it is turned inside out, leaving all of the seams fully covered and protected, with only the bottom edge being unfinished. And then we're on the last assembly step. For the skirt, it starts with a fairly standard construction with finishing the seams of the pockets and the edge of the skirts. Although I messed up a bit and for my first pocket I forgot to finish its seams and how to do that later. And then attaching the pockets to each of the panels. And the panels are sewn together around the pockets creating the one large skirt panel. and then the front opening of the skirt is finished by sewing on a kind of placket. And then turning it around, creating a clean edge where the button's going to be. And then this wasn't in the instructions, but I used an invisible stitch to hold this placket down and firmly in place instead of having it loose. I gathered the skirt using one of the longest stitches on my machine and then lined up to the bodice by lining up the front edge of the skirt to the front edge of the bodice and then lining up the side seams. I then distributed the skirt so that it fit somewhat evenly onto the bodice and sewed it in place, but only to the outer layer of the bodice. The inner layer of the bodice was turned to create a clean edge and then hand stitched in place to create a somewhat seamless finish. And then, after trying on the skirt, I went ahead and did my hem. 
and luckily I didn't have to redo the stitching at the bottom of the placket. And since I wanted a clean finish, I decided to do an invisible stitch along the bottom hem, which was a long process, full of many interruptions since apparently large swaths of fabric laying on my desk makes a uh, wonderful bed, and I'm sure a great way to get my intention. And then moving on to the final step, I started to install the buttons. I used the provided buttonhole guide to appropriately space out where the buttons and buttonholes were gonna go, and then use my machine to sew the buttonholes, which was a little bit difficult around the waistband since the fabric was so thick, but my machine ended up being able to handle it after I used a hammer to flatten the space a little bit. And then once all my buttonholes were in place, I started the very tedious process of sewing on the buttons, which, like hemming the skirt, had a bit of a somewhat unwelcome audience. And this is the final look. Overall, I think I'm pretty happy with how this project turned out. I think there's maybe a bit much gathering at the top of the skirt, and I maybe would have made it a bit narrower, but still keeping the full width at the bottom. And I think I could have gone with a bit longer of a skirt, maybe going a bit more to my calves instead of just below my knees. But I think it was a good experiment, and I think I would make this again because it is very convenient to have some nice cold weather options if you want to wear a dress. But let me know what you think of it and whether or not you've made any dresses similar to this. Thanks!